Hey friends, Kevin here, and today with some of these winter storms going on right now as I'm filming this, I know Pennsylvania's being hammered a lot of the northeast. Some of these places are going to see some record-setting snow for this month just in what's happened in the last 24 hours or so. So it seems like a good time to talk about what I carry, what you may need to carry in order to do van life or do these trips in winter. If you're going to be in those areas or you're going to be traveling through those areas or you're going to be traveling through areas that have the potential to have storms come out of nowhere because I have had that happen. So we'll talk about everything I carry, what I carry, what I don't, and why right now. Now if you've done a van conversion, you pretty much have everything the way laid out and you see all these videos, everybody doing their van bills and they have this stuff laid out. And it's nice and neat and neater than it was in my video. But everybody films this stuff pretty much during the summer and when it's nice. The thing is, when you start adding a bunch more winter clothes in, you have to have somewhere to put them. And you're dealing with a situation where you don't have a lot of space if you've done a van conversion. If you're doing a minivan camper, you have even less space to deal with. So you're not going to be able to have all the clothes with you that you necessarily would have at home. Now, there's some ways you can get around that. I know some people will use empty pillows for storage, and instead of having a pillow, they will have their clothes, a lot of things tucked in there. Some different little things you can do to save space. But I want to talk about exactly what I have, especially in the minivan, that I'm dealing with less space and colder temperatures, and I want one good, solid outfit that will take me down to... 10 degrees down to zero degrees because I'm not only interested in surviving in the van and being comfortable, I know how to do that, but I want to be out and I want to be exploring. And a lot of people notice I'm in shorts in virtually every video, regardless of the weather. There's videos of me in shorts with it snowing. The fact is I will wear shorts down to about 10 degrees because they are comfortable. I still have everything else bundled up adequately well. That's just me. But I'm going to go through, even the times I don't wear shorts, I'm going to go through everything. Let's start with the feet. We'll go up through the outfit, right up to my follically challenged head, how I stay warm. Hopefully you'll get some tips from this that'll work for you. One, boots take up a lot of space. The fact is, I really don't wear big boots. I wear pretty much sneakers all the time. If I'm going somewhere that I know I'm going to accidentally run into to just some god-awful amount of snow, then I'm going to hit the nearest thrift shop, whatever I can, grab me a big pair of gaudy boots to throw on. I'm going to wear them while I need them, and then I'm going to give them away or throw them away. I am not going to try to move around the country with these giant pair of boots. And I'm able to do that in sneakers down to zero degrees because of this, which may be the best thing that I ever stumbled across. Really high quality insulated wool socks. This is not where you want to cut corners. You don't want to get some two pair for nine dollar things. Good insulated socks like this are going to cost you about twenty dollars a pair. The good thing about wool is it dries out very quickly when you take them off. But I'm telling you, a good pair of wool socks, your feet will not be cold down to 10 degrees, down to zero, even if you're outside, regardless of almost what footwear that you choose to use. So for me, these socks, high quality socks, are much more important to me than what shoes that I wear. These are basically the same thing that skiers use inside of their snow boots, which is where I got this ideal from, from the times that I've been skiing and that went horribly. I'm not good at it at all. But this is where I got this from because miraculously, you can throw this pair of wool socks on. If you really want another layer, you can throw a pair of regular socks on, these wool socks underneath it. You shove them down in this plastic giant boot, essentially, hard plastic boot, for those of you that have never been skiing, and amazingly, your feet stay warm while you're in the snow, while you're in these freezing temperatures. So, by far, this is the one thing I make sure I always have with me 
anytime I'm going somewhere that the weather can turn. Now, as far as pants, sometimes I will have a pair of jeans with me. The fact is, I hate jeans. And I really hate blue jeans when the weather gets down 40 degrees or less, especially when it's windy. Because the wind just cuts through those things and they get hard. They are hard to bend in cold weather. So what ends up happening, you're sitting in your nice warm van in your pair of jeans and you have to get out of the van and as soon as you get out, the cold air hits these things and they're hard as a rock and they're instantly just cold all over. So that's not the way that I want to go. When I'm not doing shorts and I've decided it's too cold, I'm going to do sweatpants. I'm going to do baggy a little bit sweatpants because I'm going to have a pair of thermal underpants on under it. And you should get a thermal set, both the underpants and a long sleeve thermal shirt because this makes a huge difference and you can generally pick these things up new in stores, whether it's a Dollar General or whatever, they may be seven or eight dollars for each one. So you're less than 20 bucks for a set of these. I haven't found a lot of difference between one brand or another, but having these on makes a huge difference. And even if you're wearing, do decide that you want to be in blue jeans, having this set of thermals on underneath it, for some reason, it makes a huge difference. And you will not be as uncomfortable when you go from hot to cold when you have these on. But again, jeans still yet, they just get cold. The colder they are, the harder they move. It limits my flexibility. So I don't want jeans. I want to be in sweatpants. But again, this is a personal choice for you. That brings us up to the upper body and as far as shirts go. And the fact is, I'm going to start out with that thermal long sleeve layer again. I'm going to throw a t-shirt over that. As it gets colder, I'm going to throw a sweatshirt over that. And my final layer is going to be a larger hooded sweatshirt, kind of like that football Buffalo Bills thing you see me wearing in some videos. It's kind of oversized too big, so it will fit over all of that stuff and I won't be mummified, I can still move just like I want to and need to. And the fact is, if I'm anywhere that I need more than three layers of clothes, I need to be going south. I need to be going to a lower elevation. I need, want to be getting out of there. I don't want to be miserable. I don't want to be in below zero temperature. I can handle below freezing. I've camped in those areas for weeks at a time, but not in below zero. I'm just not interested in that. When it's cold, I'm always going to have a basic little something on my head. For bitter cold, you can have something like this, which has little facial cutouts, or you can even go fancier, and I guarantee this thing will keep you warm, something like this. Let me show you what this looks like. This may actually be overkill. But, something like this, it's really well insulated, it's soft inside, has several layers. If you're going to be in those zero degree temperatures because you want to, you need something that's going to cover the majority of your face. That's just the way it is. Now, for where I want to go, this is pretty much overkill, but this thing does not take up a lot of space folded up and I have carried this with me before but in general worst case scenario something like this is going to be all you're going to need it gloves I want a couple of cheap little pair with me just the little cloth gloves I want to be able to have those stuck all over the place so I can grab them when I need them and for when it is snowing it is for rain and sleet and that kind of thing. I want then another bigger pair of gloves to put over top of it that's going to be something like leather gloves, just so my hands aren't getting wet and my cloth gloves inside aren't getting wet. Again, I keep this stuff as simple as possible, 
with stuff that's easy to store. I'm not going and buying a lot of gaudy giant coats and jackets and all that stuff that I'm having to move around the vehicle constantly. And that's my advice to everyone is keep it simple. Now, some of the things I've talked about, the hats and the socks especially, I have a link down below the exact ones I have because I know those work and I know those work very well. There's other things you can do. You know, you have the little hand pocket things, hand warmers and foot warmers and that sort of thing. Those will help make you a little more comfortable. But quite honestly, I find those a hassle and sometimes I have those with me and I very, very seldom even use those. I don't really think about those because I just don't need them. Um, I'm fine with what I have being in the van, being out of the van, having to go out shopping, just out exploring when it's bad. Unless I'm in a situation where I'm going to go to some outdoor parade or festival and it's going to be bitterly cold, that's the only time I'm really going to grab the little packs of hand warmers or so I know it's going to shock a lot of people that I don't have big jackets and I don't have all these things for all different weather. But the fact is, you just don't need them. And the fact is, in a smaller vehicle, you just don't have space for them. And especially if there's two of you in there, that stuff takes up a lot of space. And these worst case scenarios, again, if I got somewhere and I was almost, you know, there's a blizzard coming and I know I'm going to be stuck there for a couple of days. I'm going to the nearest thrift store or secondhand store. Walk in there, buy some big bulky, ugly jacket for $8, and that's going to get me through whatever it is. And then again, donate it back to somebody that needs it or, or toss it or do whatever. But I'm just not going to go across the country having to constantly move all of this stuff around my vehicle and deal with it and store it. It's just too much of a hassle. So this is what's worked for me. Hopefully, this is what will work for you. I'd love to hear any tips for those of you on the road or those of you that had to work in cold temperatures in the north and work outside. I'd love to hear your ideals of what you have that saves space but still works for you. And we'll get back to more van build, full-size van build, minivan build, van life videos, and we'll talk soon.